There's nothing quite like the feeling of a new guitar in your hands, whether that's straight from the shop or second hand. However, to get the best from your instrument, you need to make sure that it's set up properly, even if it's new. And in this video, we're going to make sure that you're ready to rock. So, here are five steps to get your guitar set up. Three of them are quite easy and can be done by almost anybody on the regular. Two of them are a bit more complex and are there if you want to take your tinkering that extra step. All you're going to need are some wire cutters, some screwdrivers and some Allen keys. And luckily, the Allen keys are already supplied with your guitar, so you've got that step covered. By far the easiest step, and the one you're going to be doing most often, is tuning your guitar. And it's as easy as adjusting the tuning pegs at the top of the guitar. Turning them in an anti-clockwise motion will increase the pitch and turning them in a clockwise motion will lower the pitch, which is great for drop tunings like rock and metal. You might find that when you've been playing for a while, you'll be able to tune by ear. However, when you're just starting out, this can be difficult to do. Luckily, there are loads of devices on the market like clip-on tuners or tuners you can plug your guitar into that can help you get set up. There are even free apps you can get on your phone to get you into tune. Your most common tuning is standard E. This gives you access to all the open chords and thousands of songs. Standard E, from top to bottom, goes E, B, G, D, A, and E. On this guitar, I've used the clip-on tuner and I can see that the bottom E string is too sharp. So what I'm going to do is take it down past E, then back up into E. You always want to go up with your tuning rather than down, because going up keeps the string in tension and helps reduce tuning slipping. You also don't want to strike the string too hard, because striking it too hard could make the pitch distort. Broken strings. It's a pain we all must live through. And even on new guitars, you might want to swap out the factory set for some of your own preferred strings. And periodically, it's a great idea to change them anyway, just to keep your guitar sounding fresh. Luckily, it's a really easy thing to do, and we're going to show you how. On this guitar, I need to change the A string. So I'm going to detune it to take out all the tension out of the string to the point where I can pull the string up and snip it with some wire cutters. Once you've got your string removed, all you have to do is take your new string out of its packaging, get it unwound, the pointy end will obviously go through the bridge and the ball end will lock in at the bridge to stop the string slipping out. On this guitar, it's a string through body bridge, so the string goes in behind the guitar, up through the bridge and up to the headstock around the tuning peg. Once you've got the string through the bridge, you just feed it up to the headstock and wrap it around the tuning peg. You're going to wrap it around once and try and keep it as close to the base as possible before feeding it through the hole in the tuning peg. Once you've got it through the hole and pulling it taut, all you need to do is tighten up the tuning peg to give more tension to the string. You want to get a couple of winds on the tuning peg, between two and four is usually a good measure, and pull it until the string is taut. Once it gets tighter, you want to make sure that it's sat in the saddle of the bridge and in the nut slot at the top of the guitar. If it's not sat in one of these, you can simply slacken the string off, get it into place, and then tighten it up. Once it's in place, you'll be able to then cut the excess string off and tune it up. Next up is adjusting the pickup height. Adjusting the pickup height can have a massive impact on your amplified tone, because having a higher pickup will lead to a more fiery output, great for rock and metal. A lower position pickup will lead to a cleaner sound, which is just great for jazz and blues styles. To change the pickup height, simply take a screwdriver and tighten or loosen the screws either side of the pickups. Tightening the screws will raise the pickup height, whereas loosening the screw will make the pickup lower. It's important that you do this equally on both sides so that you get an even tone across each of the strings. The truss rod runs the length of the guitar neck and serves to counteract the string tension in the neck. Sometimes you might notice there's a little bit of fret buzz. In order to counteract this, you need to adjust the truss rod. 
Now, adjusting it can be very dangerous to the guitar neck, so you need to be very careful when doing so. Adjusting the truss rod affects the neck relief and increases or decreases the distance between the strings and the frets. Having a properly adjusted neck ensures that the strings have enough space to vibrate freely, giving you the best sound. You access the truss rod with the little gap at the top of the headstock and you use the supplied Allen key to make any adjustments. To adjust the truss rod, just attach the Allen key to the access point at the top of the guitar and turn it anti-clockwise or clockwise. Turning it anti-clockwise will increase the neck relief, bringing the neck forwards. Turning it clockwise will increase the back bow of the neck, taking the neck downwards. Having looked at this guitar, I can see it needs some more neck relief, so I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise to bring the neck forwards a little bit. We're just doing that in small micro turns to keep it steady and take baby steps and not do any damage to the neck. After each turn, it's important to check the effect on the neck. We do this by tuning up again and taking a capo, putting it on the first fret, and then putting a finger on whichever fret where the neck joins to the body. On this guitar, it happens to be the 17th fret. We then check whichever fret is equidistant between the fret where it joins the body and the capo. In this case, it happens to be the 7th fret, and checking the gap between the string and the fret. We do this by quickly tapping on the fret just to check there's some give in the string. We want there to be a small gap because that shows us that the truss rod is not over tight or too loose. The bridge affects the string action and the intonation of your guitar. Intonation simply meaning the tuning at each fret. Sometimes you may notice that while a string played openly is in tune, as you go up the fretboard it might start to sound out of tune. This is affected by the intonation of your guitar and can be fixed by adjusting the bridge. An easy way to check your intonation is to fully tune up the guitar, play an open string and then the same string at the 12th fret. If the note at the 12th fret is sharp or flat, then we need to adjust our intonation. We do this by turning the screws and moving the string saddles forwards or backwards. On this guitar, I'm going to play an open D string to check the pitch. I can see that I get a perfect pitch on the open string, but when I play it at the 12th fret, it's a little bit sharp. You need to be careful when pressing down the 12th fret because you don't want to apply too much pressure because that can change the pitch of the string. Because the note at the 12th fret was sharp, I'm going to move the string saddle backwards to lengthen the string and lower the pitch. If the note at the 12th fret was flat, then I'll just do the opposite. You should regularly check your progress while you're doing this by retuning the string and as we did earlier, play an open string and then again at the 12th fret. Keep doing this until the pitches match. So there you have it, that's five steps to set up your guitar. Three of them slightly easier, but two of them a bit more complex. Now you've got to remember that wood is a natural material, so your neck is going to bend and bow as the guitar ages, and every time you change the strings, the tension will be reset. So every once in a while, it's important to run through these five steps to ensure your guitar is sounding its best. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below.